A very good morning to you. And today we're going to play, guess what? Chinese lights. Yeah, I know we seem to do a lot of Chinese lights on here, but uh, this time this is for the outside of the new workshop and for the side of the house. Basically, I'm replacing the faulty security light that's down the side and I'll be putting a new one up for the garden so that uh, should anything walk across the garden or try and get in through the back end of the garden it will be lit up like a Christmas tree yeah sort of like the ends of the tunnel in uh, The Great Escape I believe the, uh, <laughs> the best analogy would be so what have I got on the bench here today well I've got what is claimed to be a 50 watt IP65 sealed floodlight with an infrared sensor and I've bought two of them and they weren't expensive as with everything from China and I thought well before I'm going to fit them I'm going to do my new usual thing I'm going to uh, have a look at it take it to bits probably remove this ratty bit of cable because it's probably not going to be long enough although I haven't yet decided that I'm going to see when I actually go to fit them what cable length I'm going to need but yeah, I think I'm going to take it apart, look for electrical safety, just generally give them a check over and see how they work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the fluke and set it to continuity. OK, we all hear the bleep. Nothing the earth wire is not connected let's just check I'm not yeah so that's that let's check from there to there so the metal case is metal oh dear no earth wire connected why did I expect that <laughs> um, it seems to be a common thing with these Chinese lights. I don't know why. So let's see what exactly they've done. We'll just undo the four screws. There shouldn't be a great deal in this. It should be four screws, a piece of glass, a bit of silicon to seal it from water, and the power going in. There should be a dropper in there and the LED uh, it looks like a standard LED. It doesn't look like a cob chip. So let's just uh, get these off and see what they've done. So as we thought, right. You've got the glass, it's just been rough cut. There is no smoothing on the edge of this. That is a very nasty looking bit of edge. So, okay, that's that bit. Let's put that over there. That is the edge of what I believe is the earth wire. It hasn't even been put underneath one of these two retaining screws. And that tin foil is very easy to bend, as I've just demonstrated with my finger. So let's pop this out and see exactly what they've done. So I'm actually not even seeing a ballast on the LED. No, it is a chip on board. It's one of those uh, chip on board modules with the infrared controlling the supply. So your, your live comes in, goes off to the infrared on the brown wire, which is European standard. The negatives are common together. In here will be some form of dropping circuit to power this module and then when that relay triggers over in there it then connects the supply to the cob chip which you'd think was very straightforward and what makes it even worse 
you have here where it says ground wire, there is a terminal to solder a ground wire to. Now if that was soldered to there, again let's let's get the fluke and just go continuity test. Put that, make sure it's under the camera again. So okay, there's one of the holes. That is insulated, so that wouldn't have made any difference. Yeah. The chip is completely insulated by the painted coating from the casing. So in reality this needs to be against the painted coating and it needs a terminal of some description or to actually put it underneath this screw here again on a ring terminal not just raw so that uh, it does provide a safety earth. At this point I suppose we should test the actual light itself. So I'm going to bring in the, the safety tester. Let's turn it round. And we'll only need two wires because only two are connected. I know this is very naughty, but let's see what happens. If we get a good flash and a bang, then whoa. Yeah, okay, so the chip itself works and is very bright. Yeah, this is, this is um, if I turn this this way, let's see if we can get it to work with the infrared module. See, now this should work. If I turn the, there we go. And we'll turn the time to minimum so that it doesn't stay on as long. That should time itself out, and I'm trying to not point this at a camera, just to not blind everybody. And it should go out. There we go. And a bit of movement triggers the light. So functionally, this is working. It's just not safe as supplied. And it's a very simple matter of putting that earth lug in. I'm just turning that off now. I'll just unplug it from the safety tester. Let's put that back over on the far side of the bench. It's just a matter of me providing a ring terminal to put that on there. Now that's got reasonably warm reasonably quickly but the whole aluminium case, I think it's aluminium, it's it's certainly very light, um, doesn't feel too bad, but also seeing as it will be outside and in theory it should only go on at night when the air temperature is cooler, uh, it should provide adequate cooling for a 50 watt chip. So there we have it, the basic Chinese death lamp. <laughs> I seem to get a lot of those, don't I? If you do like this video, then by all means, try watching ooh, the one that's up there at the top, which will be some more Chinese death lights, or the one at the bottom, which will be down here, roughly where my finger is, on whatever YouTube decides is the best fit for you. If you like the video, click like, click subscribe. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Bye for now.